Hi, my name is Dr. Mia Park. Have you thanked a bee today? If you haven't, you really should because bees and other pollinators are responsible for much of the food we eat. Did you know that 90% of flowering plants rely to some degree on animal pollinators? Or that many of our favorite foods need pollinators to produce? I'm a pollination ecologist, a scientist that studies the relationships between plants and their animal pollinators. So what is pollination and why do plants need the help of animals? Well, I bet you didn't realize, but pollination is simply plant sex. Pollination is the movement of pollen from the male parts of the flower to the female parts of the flower. Only after pollination can the pollen then fertilize the eggs in the female flower which results in seeds and future plants. But plants have a problem. Unlike animals, they're firmly rooted to the ground, so they can't just get up and find a mate. The earliest plants, like ferns, relied on water to move their pollen from plant to plant. Other plants, like conifers and grasses, make an enormous amount of pollen that they release into the wind. And this is called wind pollination. And it's sort of like a lottery, where you spew out as much pollen as you can into the air, hoping that a few will land in the right place. Wind pollination works okay in open areas where there are not that many different plant species putting out their own pollen. But it really doesn't work that well in habitats that are enclosed or diverse like a tropical rainforest or a meadow of flowers. We call flowering plants angiosperms. And boy, have angiosperms been successful. Their success is undoubtedly due to their ability to recruit the help of animal pollinators to move their pollen. So who are these important animal pollinators? Well, a pollinator is any animal that moves pollen successfully from plant to plant. What animals come to mind when you think of a pollinator? Probably bees. Yeah, they're important pollinators, but other insects, birds, and even mammals like bats are important pollinators too. The best pollinators are highly mobile. In fact, most of them fly. The more flowers that a pollinator can get to in a day, the more pollination can happen. For example, animals that are loyal to one type of flower are more likely to move the right kind of pollen to the right kind of flower. I call bees professional pollinators because they're the only pollinators that are actively collecting pollen from the flowers. Most other pollinators visit flowers for nectar, but bees are actively collecting pollen because for a bee, pollen is baby food. Just like you, young bees need protein to develop and grow. And for bees, pollen is the only source of protein they have. Have you ever noticed how cute bees are? Well, those fuzzy hairs that make them so cute are actually designed to pick up pollen. These hairs even gain an electrostatic charge as the bee's in flight. So when the bee gets close to the pollen, that pollen just globs right onto the hair. Bees will groom the pollen off their hairs and store them in these specialized pollen baskets or comb-like structures called scopa. When those are full, they'll head back to their nest and feed their babies. Bee plants have brightly colored flowers, like blue, yellow, and orange, that bees can see clearly against the background of green foliage. Not only are bees amazing pollinators, they're the most common pollinators of our agricultural and wild plants. So if we lose bees, we lose a lot of our flowering plants too. But while bees are critically important, they're not the only pollinators. Everybody loves butterflies, and you've surely seen them visiting flowers. So yes, those butterflies are pollinating too. So what's different about a butterfly? Everybody knows the big, beautiful wings, but they also have really long tongues. So flowers that want to target butterflies hide their nectar deep inside long tubes where only the butterfly can reach the nectar. Because butterflies don't hover while feeding like a bird or a moth, butterflies visit flowers that provide a landing pad. Moths are close relatives of butterflies and they pollinate too. But did you know they're not active at the same time? Now how can a moth pollinated flower attract a pollinator in the dark? Moth visited flowers are generally white. They also emit a strong sweet odor that moths pick up from miles away with their keen sense of smell. Moths have really long tongues, like butterflies, but hover when they feed on nectar. 
so moth-pollinated flowers tend to be shaped like a trumpet with a deep tube hiding nectar from other insects. Did you know that bats are the major pollinators of bananas, mangoes, cacao, and guava? Like the moths, nocturnal bats prefer white flowers that are easier to locate in the dark. These flowers have a strong odor that helps the bats locate them in the dark, but to us humans, it's a bit unappealing. Because bats are mammals, they require a lot more energy than insects. Flowers that cater to bats need to produce much more sweet nectar than other flowers. Many birds around the world are nectivorous, and they make great pollinators. Birds have excellent eyesight and primarily use visual cues. They're especially attracted to red flowers that can provide them with enough nectar to fuel their large bodies and energetic flight. Hummingbirds are the ones that we're most familiar with. Like the other nectar feeders, most of them have very long beaks and tongues to reach the hidden nectar. Flies can be excellent pollinators too. Chocolate is pollinated by a tiny fly the size of a mosquito. But when you think of what flies like, what comes to mind? They like stinky stuff, like rotting flesh and dung. So now we have a clear idea of why plants need animal pollinators, but how do they get those animals to do their work? Animals visit flowers because the flower gives them something they want. Essentially, flowers offer bribes and rewards to those pollinators that do a good job of moving the pollen around. The most important and common rewards found in flowers are food in the form of sugary, rich nectar and protein-rich pollen. Flowers also offer fragrances Animals have come to rely on these rewards as part of their diet. Now it's not enough to have the rewards. Flowers have to advertise the rewards to attract pollinators. The great variety of colors we see in flowers is undoubtedly due to the different colors that animals are attracted to. Birds and butterflies love the color red. They're very attracted to it. But bees see red as black and so rarely visit a red plant. So flowers that attract night flying pollinators, like moths and bats, are never red. Mostly they're white because that stands out best against the dark night sky. Flowers cater to the way different animals sense the world. If you were a pollinator, would you be more likely to look for a single flower or a whole patch of flowers? Of course, you'd go for the whole patch of flowers because you'd be more likely to find more flowers with nectar there. One trick that many plants use is to keep older flowers around to help attract pollinators from a distance. But they change colors after they've been pollinated. This color change is very common in flowers and acts to help speed up the process for pollinators. What other signals do you think flowers emit? That's right, flowers give off odors. It turns out many insects like bees and butterflies and moths really like sweet smelling flowers. Flowers combine color and odors with sizes and shapes to reward only those animals that will pollinate them successfully. Sometimes the plant cheats and has false colors and shapes that pretend to provide rewards. In turn, some animals have figured out how to cheat the plants too and steal rewards without transferring pollen. A combination of floral cues that attracts a specific group of pollinators is called a pollination syndrome. This collection of traits exists because different pollinators are attracted to different colors, shapes, and smells. Pollination biologists like me use these syndromes to begin to predict what pollinators visit a flower. So I hope that I've convinced you that pollination is incredibly important for our world and our food supply. Many plants need pollinators to reproduce successfully, and we need them for our healthy fruits and vegetables. Go check it out. You can be a pollination biologist too. Use what you know about how different pollinators perceive the world to start predicting who visits what flower.